Indian Nation Nation, Harry here, back with Frank Olhurst out of the New York City area. And uh, Frank, um, so first of all, how how are you and your family? You washing your hands? You staying safe out there? We're actually doing pretty good out here. <clears throat> you know, I'm in um, a suburb of New York City, and you know, the um, controls that were put in place, and you know, the precautions that have been taken seem to have been delivering on um yep. the promises offered and you know i think we can owe all of that to you know uh, proper data gathering and analytics of what um yes. you know this can uh you know you know bring forth and you know the warnings that you know were um very accurate when it comes down to it so which i'm kind of giving you that segue Right yeah, there. yeah, I, I appreciate the softball. So uh, you 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 you're a little sneaky guy sometimes. But folks, we're we're revisiting the analytics conversation. Been a while, and that's uh, that's one of my coverage areas. That's one of my passions, amongst other startups and things. So um, back in uh, late 2012, coming up on eight years ago, you wrote big data analytics turning big data into big money. I'm going to ask you a, a couple of highlights from that book, but first. You're, you're absolutely right in that I, uh, for a while, I, I found myself watching Governor Cuomo's daily briefing, um, and then I got, you know, I, I, I can't do that every day, but it, it, he's, he's quite a character. But Frank, that was analytics. I mean, all those slides are, are analytics that he's presenting, right? So it's come back into fashion, and this may be it for analytics. I mean, it may have finally arrived because Again, I did the startup, and we were probably a little bit ahead of our time in terms of uh, monetizing it. I mean, it's really cool. It's really fun. Now, can you make money at it? Which is what the title of your book is, Turning Big Data into Big Money. So what was the intent of this book before we uh, double-click into it? Um, well, basically, the intent of this book was to present an argument to medium businesses that their data has an incredible amount of value to offer that, and they're not leveraging that data and that you can use, you know, the power of analytics to go through that data and, and develop realizations out of that data. And then you can bring external data in. And I go through a bunch of different use cases in the book where, you know, it seemed obvious to me, you know, as a person writing the book and doing the research around it, and also as someone who, you know, has worked in the analytics arena, that, um, you know, you should be leveraging all of this data your business has gathered, along with publicly available data, to come to conclusions on where to drive business, which in turn can lead to better profits. And, um, you know, a, a lot of people, I think, you know, for a lot of people, it kind of went over their head because it seemed like such a fantastic concept that I think, I think they came at it with the um, idea of that this might be too far beyond my capabilities to do, which in turn might have been true because, you know, we've created this huge market out there of data scientists, which, you know, which is just a fancy name for a statistician when it comes down to it. Well, let me, and, and, and I, I, there's a joke in there somewhere. I got SQL uh, 6.5 certified in the late 1990s because I worked for an accounting firm that sold Great Plains software. And after Microsoft acquired Great Plains, they kicked Netware Beetrieve to the door and went to SQL, which was cool. And it came with small business servers. So I was the point man to go get certified. You had to be certified, right? So, um, and, and the joke is, is where do, uh, where do old SQL server types go to uh, go to die? Like, you know, airplanes go out to the desert. Well, they go to analytics. I mean, that, it, it's a natural act for someone from SQL to go to analytics, right? Um, but, you know, uh, yep. I'm, so, so I'm going to make up a question because uh, you've already kind of answered a couple that I have off screen. But um, without naming names, there's a large uh, online tax calculation um, software company, and uh, I have a relationship with them. And they collect uh, gazilla bytes of data. So they're seeing your aunt's jams are sold in the Midwest, and she's got to pay a penny here and a penny there and a penny here and a penny there for an online transaction. 
um, and they help with that. Okay, and so they're collecting a lot of data, especially economic data. And I always kind of tried to delicately nudge them that, okay, are, are you're a railroad company now. Are you in the railroad business or are you in the transportation business? And they, I, I with all due respect, I think they think they're in the railroad business uh, because the data they're collecting, they should have an index out there of economic activity, especially right now with the flight to online commerce. And uh, Frank, they are seeing it every day, right? And they could have, um, by analogy, uh, uh, Challenger Gray and Christmas is a worldwide HR firm. You hear about them on national public radio. And um, they have an index out about employment statistics because they see that, right, in the private sector. And in this software company, doggone it, it could have done it. Uh, maybe they will. But you see where I'm trying to go with this, Frank, is that they are collecting, I, I mean, as we speak, think of all the transactions going online, and this company's right there in the middle collecting that data to do the tax calculation. I would offer they're in the transportation business, not the railroad business. Go. Yep, the data transportation business, <laughs> when it comes down to it. But, you know, there's uh, several things that have to be considered when it comes down to it. And um, many of those, um, were, you know, kind of revolve around the idea of data privacy. So, you know, folks that sign up for these businesses and provide information, you know, there's a, um, a question of who actually owns the data and how that data can be officially used. And um, so that, you know, adds a level of complication in there as well. But, you know, on the other hand, when most people sign up for services or provide information, they don't always read the small print saying that, you know, that company can use your data. You know, they just click, click beyond it. Now, in those cases where all this data is being gathered, there's a lot of insight that can be generated. And it all comes down to what you're mining for in the data and what you're comparing it to out there. Yeah, yeah, I I exactly. That that was always an internal debate in that startup. Um, it basically, uh, I won't bore you or the readers, but it, it all came down to uh, dashboarding is storytelling. So the, the end of the whole process of the number crunching, Frank, would have been one of these gorgeous Power BI or Tableau dashboards with little animated characters stacked up. And they really are cool. That, I, I could do dashboarding all day. But at the end of the day, that's why we're here, right, with analytics, or at least that was my experience. And, and, and that's basically, maybe we start to wrap on this. That's essentially what Governor Cuomo is doing with those briefings is dashboarding. You know, makes sense? Yes, yes, makes a lot of sense. But, you know, there's more to it than just saying that, you know, you're telling a story. The idea here is also to predict the future. The idea here is to look at, you know, that data and come up with a, um, a concept of where things are heading. And, you know, that, you know, really uh, applies itself well to things such as supply chain dynamics for businesses. Um, customer purchasing trends, especially around like the holiday season. So, you know, the list goes on where this can uh, drive things. But I, I think the most important thing about data analytics at this point in time is how it's um, intersecting with um, AI and machine learning. You know, analytics is becoming the, um, the food source, the dog food for AI and ML. Yeah. And, you know, with that in mind, I think I have to update my book. I was going to say, you know, and, and and hopefully you still have the Microsoft Word files because an update is always faster than writing from uh, scratch, let me tell you. <laughs> and, uh, but, sure. I, no, but, you know, I, I would encourage you to do that. Keep in touch with us on that because, yeah, the book is uh, seasoned and it now needs an update and there's there's a lot of new use cases. Um, so, well, Frank, I want to be the first to uh, wish you and your family a happy Fourth of July weekend coming up, and uh, hope hope you get out and take some uh, take some time off. Thank you so much, Harry. You take care as well. All right.